Ladies and gentlemen, live from the famous Acme Comedy Theater in Hollywood, it's Acme Saturday Night. Starring Mark Danen, Kirk Dietrich, Porter Kelly. Josh Paget, Jen Parker, Eric Stitt, Kristen Truxus, featuring Curtis Reisel, <laughs> musical guests, The Sleeping Masses. And your host, Travis Van Winkle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Travis Van Winkle. saying, uh, should we know who this guy is? Um, let me clue you in. Uh, I was in a movie called Friday the 13th. It was the biggest gross opening weekend for any horror movie of all time. I, uh, I played the asshole in that movie. I was also in a movie called Accepted with Justin Long and Jonah Hill. I, I played the asshole in that one too. I was also in a little movie called Transformers with uh, Megan Fox and Shia LaBeouf. I played the asshole in, in that one too. There's a, there's a common thread here. I, I seem to play the asshole a lot. And I don't know why. Because I am the nicest guy. Ask any of my friends. They will tell you that I'm, I'm, just, I'm a nice guy. I, I generally want good things to happen to good people. I want good things to happen to bad people. I just want good things to happen in the world. Hello? You know? Hey, Mom? Hey. Oh, that was Excuse me, hey, sir, I know that, that phone call is probably really important, but you mind in the middle of my opening month. I appreciate it. So like I was saying, like, I, I am a nice guy. I was in the Boy Scouts when I was a kid. My, my mom says that I have the biggest heart in all of Los Angeles. That has to mean something, right? I, you would think. So, I don't know. I mean, I tend to do things for... Excuse me. Hey, sir, get off the phone, okay? Before I come over there, I rip out your fucking kidney and sell it to Bolivia where they'll pay me top dollar for that shit. <laughs> yeah, you. You know what? I don't know karate, but I will come over there and kick your ass, buddy. Whatever, movie douche. Just chill out. <laughs> that, that, hits, that hits home. Thank you. What was I saying? Nice right, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good guy. I really am, down to my core. So I'm glad, I feel better now that, that I've cleared this up with all of you. It just, I feel better. You guys, we have a great hey. show today. Hey. Hey, Travis. Hey. Hi. Hey. Um, we, we have a question for you. Yeah. Okay. Can we see your abs? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't really think that that would be. I'll show you mine. <laughs> That's not necessary. Do you want to see mine? <laughs> you know, you guys look, I actually, I, don't, I knew a guy in high school that would always kiss his biceps, and he's just, I just don't want to be that guy. <laughs> uh, did, you, did you do your own stunts in Friday the 13th? I did, yep. Wow. Did, did, did you do your own screaming? Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I, did. I, I have a really good scream. Do you want to hear? <laughs> Too embarrassed. <laughs> okay, well, why don't we get the show started then? How about hey, Travis. Hey, Kristen. What's up? Nothing. I, I was told you were showing your abs. <laughs> okay, I don't know why that's even relevant to show my abs here right now, so no, I'm, I'm not going to. Lame! 
lame. <laughs> I know it's, I'm sorry. Is there anything else that you ladies want besides me showing my abs? show tonight. Stick around. We have the sleeping masses here tonight. Now, Acme Comedy presents Curtis Slowly Rises Into Frame. <laughs> this has been Curtis Slowly Rises Into Frame. She said I should ask you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, well, Peter, tell you what, when a man and a woman love each very, other very, very drunk. <laughs> but when a man and a woman love each other very, very much, sometimes the man um, will put his penis, okay, inside the woman's vagina, and that's called sex, okay? Sex sounds gross to me. Yeah, it can be, especially if their, their balls tend to hit you a lot. Um, that's, why, that's why it helps to be drunk. Judy. Uh, he's the one who started it. He's 11. I've, I've never done this before. What, okay. had sex? No, no, had the sex talk. I've had a lot of sex before, like, like a lot. Judy! <laughs> I'm just being honest, okay? I think that's what the sex talk is supposed to be. Oh Wait, God. so people have sex to not make babies? Uh, How come? Well, because most people find it you know, very pleasurable. Well, and, and, and when they don't, they get really good at faking it. Um, <laughs> like, mostly that's women. Really, yeah. really, I'd say all women. Judy! All right, listen. Um, <laughs> When you're in love, you know, sex is just a very pleasurable thing and it's a nice way of expressing that love. Okay? It's, it's also a great way to get out of giving a blowjob. Judy! <laughs> you know, he, he needs to know these things. Oh my god. Wait, so if people have sex to not make a baby, how did they know if they made a baby? Well, Peter, the no, Judy, don't. No, 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 I got just, this, I got just... this. The woman goes to the store and buys a pregnancy test. Yes, that's correct. Okay. okay. And and if it says she's pregnant, then she's like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> like who the hell have I been with lately? And and what am I gonna tell my husband if this baby is black? Wow. <laughs> is there something you want to tell me? No, I I didn't. I, don't, I wasn't with a black guy recently. I'm talking, you remember when this happened. You remember when this happened to your sister? My mom? No! Yes! No! Judy, no! Huh? Listen, Peter, folks, okay, look. If a man and a woman, uh, you know, they wanna, they're in love, and sometimes they'll have sex to have a baby, and, or sometimes it's just for pleasure. But either way, you don't have to worry about it because don't have sex unless you're in love, okay? Ah, good. Okay. Okay. 
Unless you're wasted, then it doesn't count. Shut it! Comments just this one time, okay? This guy worked miracles for Susan and Tom. <clears throat> oh, thanks for seeing us, Doctor. Of course, I have a long waiting list, but since you're friends with Susie, I thought I'd squeeze you on in here. Thanks. Now, <clears throat> why don't you tell me why you're here? Well, um, we've been married for a few years now, and I don't know, things have changed. Well, it's we typical to gain weight in the first couple of years if you're doing that. What? What? Why, we, would you, why would you say that? We, we've actually both lost weight since we got married. Yeah. Patty brings up a great point. Why is the attraction gone? Well, I wouldn't say that the attraction is gone. It's just that sometimes she Keeps is, you down? No. It's, you know, the old ball and chain? Like she she, she gets upset when you come home late from work? No, that's not it. Uh, she's actually the one who's gone a lot for work. She has to travel, and I kind of wish that she was home more often, you know, I miss her. I see, I see. So he's a real wet blanket then, huh? Really needy, needy, needy. Honey, he's not needy. It's actually kind of sweet. I, I get home from a trip, and he's cleaned the house, and there's flowers on the table, and dinner's ready, and... <laughs> Is that why you think he's a pussy? I didn't say that. Are you running on pussy? Yeah. No. I, I never said that, okay? I think it's actually kind of sweet when he does that. It reminds me of old times. Okay. Speaking of old times, you are way too old for him. Come on, that's why your marriage is tanking, cougar. What? <laughs> robbing the cradle, are we? That's not, I mean, she's literally two days older than me. It's actually a really cute story. Yeah, it's it's not relevant right here. It must be her hair, right, John? What's wrong with my hair? Well, nothing is wrong with your hair, but John evidently doesn't like it. You know, it's 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 long and it's matty and it's it looks a little greasy. No, I think right. No, it's, it's unmanageable, right, no, John? No, that, I think your hair is beautiful. It's really lovely. <laughs> no, you don't. No one does. <laughs> be honest with me right now. You no, really I don't. Like I like her hair. You're lying. That's what it is. It's because of his lying, isn't it? No, he's the most honest man I know. I trust him 100%. Well, then is it his glasses? I mean, come on, guy. It's 2010. They have laser surgery. Get them fixed. It's gross. <laughs> and nerdy. I, 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 think, I think John's glasses are adorable. Thank you. Really? Eef. Okay. Well, you're lying to yourself and society. Now, if, if this all rings a bell, this is what I think is happening with you. No, stop. Just stop guessing what's wrong with us and just let no, us no, tell you no, what No, 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 no. I'm a doctor, okay? Hold on. Is it the way she dresses? No. What? What's wrong with the way I dress? Well, your dress is a little low cut, and by low cut, I mean whorish. <laughs> I, I mean, act your age, Cradle Robin. No, I like the way that she dresses. You look lovely. I, look, I really like that dress. Just... Thank you, John. Really? So you like whores then? No. no. So is John's prostitute addiction what's ruining your marriage? No. 
No, it's not, because I don't have a prostitute addiction, okay? The only woman that I want is Patty. That's why we came here, to get help from you. But all you've done is ridicule us this whole time. I mean, I don't care who recommended him as a doctor, but this is ridiculous. No one talks to my wife like that. Fuck off, Dr. Douche. I know what it is! She's really a man! Hello and welcome to Welcome Wyoming, the only morning show in the greater Wyoming Delta. Okay, well, uh, good morning and welcome to the show. Morning. Did you have a good night? Yep. You? Anything new going on in Wyoming today? Same old, same old. <laughs> Pretty cold out there. Is it still snowing? Yep. <laughs> Starboard? I heard you went to Cheyenne. Sure did. That's a big city. <laughs> yep. Don't like it much. No, me neither. Too many things happening there. Yes. Okay, that's it for hot topics. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh, no, it's 
Can I get another one? Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Once again, Acme Comedy presents Curtis slowly rises into frame like Spider-Man. <laughs> yep, that's it. Resin lights the Venice moon out there. Running in circles, running in circles, babe. Upside down, running in circles. I should be miles from you, but I still want to play with you.
Once again, Curtis rises slowly into frame, like Travis Van Winkle.
there is a burning cauldron of hate in my belly, and the black fire burns and beckons for me to eat your soul! And that is time. Good job, Paul. You know, we didn't get to actually reconciling your anger, but it was a really good start. <laughs> That was intense. <laughs> I'm like, did I scare you? Uh, that was very scary. But I was also a little excited. Good, yeah. good, good job, you guys. You know, my assertive, assertiveness workshop is designed to help you take charge of your anger so it doesn't take charge of you. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. By releasing your anger in a controlled environment, you are less likely to release it on an innocent bystander. Uh, that's happened. Yeah, on the way here, in fact. I know that guy with the Von Dutch trucker hat. Yeah, I fucking threw my gum at him. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> All right, now let's switch it up here. Switch it up. Oh, you're, you're okay. Uh, okay. This is so fun, isn't it? <laughs> okay. All right, and Will, whenever you're ready. You. <laughs> you. You make me sick. I just want to punch you in your goddamn face! God damn it, in your face! Yes, great, Will! How did that feel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I felt, I felt like I was angry. I don't know why. I, if I can, uh, it was clear to me that you hated me. Did I? Yeah. But, but that was just for the moment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, good job, both of you. And now, you know, sometimes anger is actually less about the words and more about the intention of those words, okay? Uh, what's, you know, behind them? I thought you were going to punch me in my face. Oh, really? Yeah. I would never do that unless I was drunk. <laughs> so don't, but know that you could, okay? All right, so here we go. We're going to do a lightning round. Now, I want you to remember intention. Okay, intention. Okay. Intention! I was really excited for a second. It's okay. exciting. <laughs> okay, so the first round is synonyms of anger with intention. Go. Rage!
it not angry. You're gonna harness that anger and you're gonna make it work for you. I am so there because I was like this close to killing someone last week. <laughs> oh, me too! Must be the economy, huh? Yeah, it's bad. said something more comfortable, I thought you meant something like sexy. Oh. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> right? Grr. <laughs> I, I'm just suddenly tired. Oh. So I'm just going to go. I'll call you. Okay. I'll call you. Yeah, I'm tired too. Move, beauty. 
Oh, oh, you want to play? Mm. Okay. Okay, baby doll. Dibs on the three cover girls over by the bin. Dibs on the hot chick that was behind the bar. Dibs on the girl puking in the bathroom. Dibs on every fucking girl in this place. Holy shit, she's killing you right now. <laughs> but you can't. Uh, uh, uh. Dibs on the words I can. Dibs, dibs on the entire English language. Holy shit, that's badass. That is so bad. <laughs> Hey, yo, I want to give a shout out to Soup. You real, Soup. The sauce for you. I love you. I like soup, yo. Cause it's the ish. This chili chata or some broth with fish. I, I eat soup. soup. Hey, yo, paparazzi. Forget Seinfeld. I'm, I'm the new soup. Not so no cream of what? I don't even care. I spend almost every night for eating soup up in my layer. I like the jambalaya better than Mariah. They go top and only walk a semi mouth on fire. What's up with the crew rolling bump and G unit? I'm doing up a brew and I'ma put some broccoli in it. What's up with sipping Merlot, watching movies, Papalini? I'm going out to bars and drinking chicken noodle tea. What to read? Cook, cook like Betty Crocker. I'm taking out my crocky pot and adding a ham hocker. And I'ma split some peas, not the black eyed kind. But to draw certain flavors, I'ma add a lemon brine. I dribble up the court, bounce and bench to fall. I got my cream of mushroom soup for being casserole. This chili chowder or some broth with fish. I eat soup. Hey, yo, paparazzi, forget Seinfeld. I'm the new soup Nazi. I want to give a shout out to Lobster Fisk, you real. Italian wedding, lemon orzo, masso bao ow, y'all. From the Acme News World Headquarters in Hollywood, this is the Acme Saturday Night News with Dan Kane. Hi everybody, welcome to the Acme Saturday Night News. I'm Dan Kane. Our top story tonight, don't touch those eggs. That's right, the nationwide egg recall is growing by the minute with over half a billion eggs now involved in the Salmonella, salmonella scare. I can say that. <laughs> that Salmonella scare, which has officials Scrambling. Ah, that's right, folks. The egg recall is so bad that some grocery chains are starting to crack. Egg producers are so embarrassed, they're walking on eggshells. Officials say, in order to avoid cross-contamination, don't put all your eggs in one container. The recall is so bad it could go on for weeks, and it won't be over easy. Okay, folks, sorry. That's all the yolks we have. What, too far? I've got egg on my face. <laughs> All right. Our other top story tonight, it's the end of combat operations in Iraq as U.S. combat troops unpacked, uh, packed, <laughs> packed up and drove into Kuwait. 
Of course, John McCain said during his campaign that the U.S. would be in Iraq for a hundred years. I guess now we know he didn't mean human years, he meant McCain vampire years. <laughs> Yeah. He may be old, but a new study finds that Senator John McCain is a social media genius. He's ranked number one among media-savvy politicians using Facebook and Twitter. And in fact, the top three were all Republicans, while the Democrats came in fourth. Or did they? We'll just let that one sit a minute then. <laughs> the confusion over President Obama's religious beliefs seems to be getting worse. A recent poll found that about 20% of Americans believe Obama is a Muslim. 40% said they don't know, and everybody else thinks he is God. <laughs> I don't know which of those ideas is the most dangerous. In international news, Pakistan is asking for more aid to help with the massive flooding disaster there. The United States is responding with food, supplies, and a special offer to teach Osama bin Laden how to water ski. <laughs> yeah. Paramount Pictures recently announced that it has made a deal to turn Justin Bieber's life story into a 3D feature film. Live via satellite to tell us more is Justin Bieber. <laughs> Hey, Justin, uh, congrats. <laughs> congratulations on the movie, buddy. Hey, thanks, Dan. I'm real excited. Uh, I can understand. Uh, uh, we're told that you're going to be playing yourself in the film. That's right, Dan. You know, who better to play me than me? You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I, I think I know it. <laughs> I think I know what you're saying. Uh, so, uh, You've, you've been working on your acting and such? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, like, uh, check this out, Dan. Mom, we should totally put my songs on YouTube so I can be famous. Wow, <laughs> wow yeah, I got chills. That was, <laughs> uh, I guess the obvious question is, why are they making a movie about your life when you've only lived a few years of it? Well, you know, Dan, here's the thing. I mean, wouldn't, I wouldn't want them to wait till I was, like, old, you know, like 20 or something, right? Like, how disgusting would that, that be, you know? So, so uh, you know, you hear what I'm saying, right? Uh, well, yeah, that, that would be ridiculous. So, uh, Justin, when is this movie coming out? Oh, it should be done in, like, you know, the next couple days. <laughs> <laughs> next couple days? It was just announced. How is that possible? Well, you know, they're modeling it after the process of my CD release schedule, you know? Plus, I, I, I've been on the planet for, like, five minutes, so it doesn't take long to tell my story, you know? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you were born now famous. Pretty much, pretty much it. Uh, I am just curious, though, if, if someone gave you a Lifetime Achievement Award, would you go away for good? Well, yeah, but you better hurry up, because uh, once the movie's out, I'm going to retire and all that. Well, you're going to Wow, big news. Okay. Uh, good luck on your retirement. Justin Bieber, everyone. Former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich's corruption trial ended this week, and the jury failed to convict him of any corruption charges. Blagojevich says he's not planning to re-enter politics, but would consider a reality TV show. With that hair, everyone's hoping he gets on MTV's The Shop. <laughs> and now, with an op-ed piece entitled, An Open Letter to Lindsay Lohan, here's our Acme News Entertainment Correspondent, Kirk Dietrich. Thanks, Dan. Sure. Welcome to the Acme News, Kirk. So, uh, let's hear your letter. All right. Dear Lindsay, I hear that you may be getting out of rehab soon and are going to be enjoying uh, polite society. It's a harsh world out here with opportunities to backslide at every turn. If you're not careful, you could and, let's face it, probably will end up right back where you are. That's why, uh, that's where I come in. I've come up with the perfect way to fix your situation and get your life and career back on track. You, you have the perfect solution? Yes, I do. Let's hear it. Hang out with me. <laughs> now, you're probably thinking, how is this going to help me? I'll explain. Number one, I am a large, fat man. Next to me, you will always appear thin and petite, no matter how much you eat. Good point. Sure. 
No more need to work out to fit the Hollywood mold. Plus, watching me eat is like watching a mighty elm going to a wood chipper and turned into mulch. <laughs> Your appetite will naturally be curbed without the use of cocaine, diet pills, or self-induced vomiting. Number two, I like to drive. You are horrible at it. She is. Yeah, that's, that's I will drive your expensive car wherever you want to go. Be it a trendy nightclub, a Taco Bell drive through or back to rehab. <laughs> Number three, I've had my share of horrible stuff happen to me over the course of my life, and I will regale you with incredibly depressing tales of my childhood. He will, he will. <laughs> Your recent troubles will seem minor when cast in the unblinking sharp relief of the tales of woe that I will weave from my brush with death at my birth, or growing up a lonely fat child in Detroit. In Detroit, for God's sake. <laughs> and did I mention that in addition to being fat, I am deaf in one ear and I have a lazy eye. You're smiling already, aren't you, Lindsay? Because <laughs> you know she's watching. Yes. Number four, I tell long-winded and confusing and often pointless stories. I think full we of get that. Circular logic and tangents and intensely detailed descriptions of things that don't relate to the rest of the story. In an effort to stay focused, your mind will tire. These stories will wash over you like a wave of Ambien and <laughs> lull you into a coma-like sleep every night. Now, when you're sleeping, you're not out partying and getting into trouble. You can just call me the horror whisperer. Oh. <laughs> you can call it that, yeah. Not that you're a horror, Lindsay. Seriously, I would bang Colin Farrell if I had the chance to. Well, who wouldn't? I know, right? Yeah. If he doesn't stop calling, it's probably going to happen. Uh, number five, any drugs passed to you by your friends or your managers or your family, I will do so you do not have to. You would do that? You would do that? Yes, I would. I know you like cocaine, Lindsay. I will do your cocaine for you. And let me tell you, fat comedians and cocaine don't have a stellar track record together. <laughs> so that just shows you how dedicated I am to your sobriety. Number six, I am an avid reader and a pretty decent writer. So I will read the scripts that come in for you, if they still do. <laughs> and I will weed out any parts that involve you playing a drug addicted party girl. And porn scripts. Because let's face it, you keep doing what you're doing and that is right around the corner. <laughs> so to recap, Ms. Lohan, with my program of hanging out with me, you will feel better about yourself, you will no longer need a driver, you won't only need a therapist, you will drop from the tabloid's purview because sober Lindsay is not a story. It's too positive. It won't sell papers. It doesn't. No. You will finally be well-rested and sober for the eventual day when your drunken, drug-addled chrysalis begins her Drew Barrymore-like transformation into the Hollywood power mogul butterfly that you were destined to become. I can see that now. Until then, I'm waiting. Call me. <laughs> All right. Kirk Dietrich, everyone. How could she pass that up? <laughs> There's no way. Yesterday was National Lemonade Day, which makes today the national, why the F do we have a National Lemonade Day day? <laughs> Celebrate. And finally tonight, after 30 years, Dr. Loya, Dr. Laura has announced she's leaving her syndicated radio show following an incident last week where she used the N word repeatedly on the air. In a related story, Dan Kane has announced he's not leaving the Acme Saturday Night News after calling Dr. Laura the NHB word, narrow-minded honky bitch. <laughs> there, I said it, but of course I can say that because I'm in two of the groups that the NHB word describes. Yep, I'm a narrow-minded bitch. <laughs> That's it for this edition of the Acme News. I'm still Dan Kane.
to Cold Stone Creamery. What can I get for you? Um, can I get a like it size cup of cake batter ice cream? A uh, like it cake batter. Got it. Uh, what mixing would you like? Oh, no thanks. Snow caps, great. Oh, no, 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 no. I said no thanks. I don't understand. I just want the ice cream, no mixing. I don't understand. No mixing, just the ice cream. Well, you know it's free, right? Yeah, yeah. I just want the ice cream. Uh, we have peanut butter cups, <laughs> Oreo cookie crumbles, we have coconut. I know and what you have. Just want the, the ice, ice cream. cream. Mm -hmm. Right. How about cake? You know, you, you like the uh, cake batter ice cream. I, I can put an entire cake in there. I can do that. No, I don't want you to do that. Just the ice cream will be fine. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> you, you put the ice cream in the cup. What is the problem? Uh, well, there's nothing in the manual about this. Why would there be? You put the ice cream in the cup and you give it to me. I don't even know if that's legal. What? Look. I have to put it on the cold stone and then and then do the thing with, with the scoopy thing and then put it in the cup. Okay, that's why they call it cold stone creamery. Otherwise it would just be creamery. <laughs> Look, how about, hey, how about you mix in air? Huh? What? Mm -hmm. how, how, would I, how would I even do that? You put it on the slab thing. The cold stone. The cold stone. <laughs> and you mix in air or invisible marshmallows or whatever you want, and you give it to me. That's... You lost me with invisible marshmallows. I don't, I don't know. What? Look, I'm, I'm just really scared right now. I'm, I, I'm confused. Are you going to start crying? No. Don't cry. No. Just don't cry. I'm just... I will, you're crying now. Whoa, 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 whoa. What seems to be the problem here? Yeah, uh, I was just trying to get a like it sized cup of cake batter ice cream. With no mixing. No mixing? Is this true? Yes. What is wrong with you? What? I just, you know it's free, right? Yes, I just want the ice cream. That's it. Did you check the manual? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Ah, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Just take the uh, take the mix in, please. I don't want the mix in. Look, I told him that he could have cake in his mix in. Hi, you obviously like cake. That is a win win. Let's just take that mix in. No. Take it! Take it for the love of God! Please! No. Take the fucking mixin! What the hell is wrong with you people? I just want the ice cream and no mixin! I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What do we do? This is really confusing for me. This is so much I don't know. I can't even talk. Uh, okay, you leave me no choice. Whoa! Whoa! Take the fucking mixin! Wait, you're gonna cut me if I don't take the mix in? No! I'm gonna cut him! No! Oh my god, take the mix in! No. Please, would you just take it? What's it gonna be? I have three dogs. It's gonna be a mix in of your choosing or a mix in of Jeff's blood. No! Wait, okay, hold on, wait! Ah, 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 ah. Can you mix in cake batter ice cream with cake batter ice cream? Yes! Oh, God! <laughs>
Paris Hilton's dog is stuck inside, and if we rescue it, we get a million dollars. Didn't think of that. <laughs> Wait. What if it's a pinata filled with cocaine that's been put there in a sting operation to bust a drug ring, and if we touch it, we might foil the investigation? I did not think of that. <laughs> yup. Hey, boss. I found the, I found the pinata. Yeah, no, the cocaine-filled one. Uh, nobody touched it. I would have whacked them. What? Uh, hold on, let me check. And now, Acme Comedy presents Jen Parker's What My Dog Is Really Saying. Big up to my 
my girl T baby. It's so cold in the day. <laughs> and finally, he's an aspiring rapper who works at an oil change shop from Dallas, Texas. Please welcome Boogeyman. Yo, 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 what's up? What's up, yo, Texas in the house? I don't know what innovative means. 
because I keeps it real. You know what I mean? But if it's something black folks do, then it's probably some cool ass shit. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But like the white folks be keeping the black man down and shit. They be stealing their stuff and they want to be black and shit. They like imitate everybody. Stop! Stop right there! Okay? By some pure chance in that horribly, horribly offensive diatribe, you've you've given the correct answer. The correct answer was imitate. Alright? We have a winner! How you doing, bro? Oh, I'm doing all right. You wanna party with the winner? And by winner, I mean my dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know I do. And now, Acme Comedy presents Jen Parker's What My Dog Is Really Saying. Um, she, she said, hey, look, that guy's wearing blue pants.
you'll be the same. Tell them no. how I know this love is real. I don't feel death, I feel the pain. Tell them no. how I know this love is real. I'll be a dark, you'll be my flame. Ladies and gentlemen, the sleeping masses. <laughs> yeah. One last time, it's Jen Parker's What My Dog Is Really Saying. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us at the famous Acme Comedy Theater in Hollywood for Acme Saturday Night. Special thanks to our host, Travis Van Winkle. And our musical guest, The Sleeping Masses.